Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome to part two of the Raven Cycle book reviews. Um, today I'm going to be reviewing Blue Lily Lily Blue and The Raven King. Now I just finished The Raven King, I was about to say both of these, but I read this one first obviously and then this one. I just finished The Raven King about like a couple days ago, I'm not exactly sure how long ago, but I've been thinking about it and mulling it over and think about how I want to talk about this. And quite frankly, I have to do this review now before I forget because if I wait any longer, I'm going to forget literally everything that's happened in these past two books. I actually had to go back and look at my notes from this one in order to remember what things happened in this one. Um, just because from the course of reading this one to reading this one, I completely forgot everything that happened in Blue Lily Lily Blue. Um, all the books just kind of blur together. So uh, I'm gonna put a spoiler warning right here. If you have not read any of these books, I'm going to be talking about all of them, I'm sure, in this video. Because everything blurs together and everything's interconnected and I'm just gonna have to talk about everything. So with that being said, let's get into the video. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about Blue Lily Lily Blue first because obviously that's the first book of the last two that I read. Um, this one I did enjoy, but I thought out of all the books, it was, no, The Dream Thieves was the most confusing and felt like it had the least amount of plot. This one felt like it was really trying to have a plot, which was finding the mom, Mara. Um, and I appreciated that, but I think it lost itself along the way so many times that it almost felt like it didn't have a plot again. Um, there were so many random things that happened in this. Um, that it just, it felt like a bunch of random things happening in one book and not anything that was, you know, connected in a way, like if that makes sense, like it was all connected, but it didn't feel connected. And it still had the problem of none of the characters acting real. I am such a character reader. I, it, a book can have the worst plot in the world and I will love it if the characters are enjoyable. This one was just very much like all the books. <sighs> All the books have this problem where all the characters are acting in ways that I would never imagine them to behave. And let me talk a little bit about Green Mantle because he's one of the new characters in this book. He is the villain um, and the description of him does not fit who he actually is. Um, they describe him, especially Mr. Grey describes him as this spider in this web and if you kill the spider then the whole web comes down around you and you you get killed and your family gets killed and we can't go after Green Mantle because he's the biggest bad guy ever. Which is very quickly disproven in The Raven King when he actually does get killed because literally nothing happens and no one cares that he dies. So the fear factor is not there when you're reading the description that Mr. Grey is giving in this book about Green Mantle and then you meet Green Mantle because a lot of the chapters are written from his perspective and he's just this weak little wimp whose wife Piper is actually a way better character than he is. Quite frankly she's the one who's doing everything and he's just kind of there. Um, I don't know like it's difficult to explain. He's just not intimidating at all. I've never found any of the villains in any of the books intimidating, even like the demons and the creepy magical stuff that they that Maggie throws in. None of it's scary, none of it's creepy, none of it makes me go, oh my gosh, the stakes are really high because quite frankly, I, I don't understand the magic system in this world and I don't understand what the stakes really are. And I'll get into that more in the Raven King because I feel like that's when everything really kind of comes to a head with it. But I just, I don't get it. And maybe that's me being stupid, but I've also watched a lot of reviews on these books, not just these two, but the whole series. Um, and a lot of people are also confused. So that makes me feel a little bit better and a little less stupid. Um, and who, dear Lord. Um, but I'm gonna talk a couple positive things about this book. One is from the Dream Thieves to this one, there's definitely more of a plot. Like I said, there's now a clear, concise goal, which is find Ma uh, Mara. I almost said Moira. Ma Mara, I can't, whatever her freaking name is, Mara, the mom. They're trying to find her. Blue is still obnoxious. She's still 
hype about everything and I know that's her character and I know that's what the author was going for but it just made me feel like I was reading political commentary and I don't like that. I find it so obnoxious especially since the majority of the book is not about any of that. It's like that one episode of Avatar The Last Airbender from season one where Katara gets upset that um, this waterbending tribe won't teach women and it just it never came back and it never was like an actual thing in the rest of the show so it just felt like it was thrown in there for political commentary. I'm not reading fictional books about magical land to know why catcalling is bad. That whole scene was just stupid. And then her reaction to Adam reacting to the catcalling was stupid. And then his reaction to the catcalling was stupid. The whole scene was just ridiculous and it didn't need to be in there. But that's what it felt like almost all the scenes were. It was just ridiculous nonsense that didn't need to be in there and it was just there. The scenes with Gansey and Blue, especially the ones where he's like calling her secretly on the phone, I thought that was pretty cool. I did enjoy that. Um, I do like the forbidden love trope. It's so stupid, I know, but like I do enjoy it primarily because I very much aggressively hate the insta-love story tropes and uh, this at least doesn't do that. At least she is struggling with her emotions and trying to figure out what she really feels and he's trying to do the same thing and they respond to it more so like teenagers where they want to keep it a secret because they don't want to hurt someone's feelings even though realistically you're hurting someone's feelings just by not telling them whatever but it at least worked better and so I got to give this book kudos for that as well for keeping the love story interesting and compelling but not too love story ish if that makes sense because really these series like this series is not about the love story even though that's what it's marketed as and I don't understand that the people who did the marketing needs to, need they need to be fired because it's awful um when I first started reading this series I thought it was going to be just Gansey and Blue can't kiss and oh no what's gonna happen with that but really that's very a very very small portion of the book um or the books so I think the marketing is really bad for the series just throwing that out there. But anyway, my favorite character from this book, and honestly, from all the books now, is Jesse. And he is introduced in this one, and he dies in this one. And that makes me very, very, very freaking sad. Because he is the one character that, like, I can get behind in all aspects. Like, he does nothing wrong. He's there to be, like, that support. He brings the story along. He's compelling. And my cat was gnawing at something, so that's why I was like, what the heck? Um, but he makes me feel very warm inside and I don't know why because he's just such a pure, well I do know why, he's such a pure soul. Like he's just there to, to help the characters. He's not there to hinder anyone. He's helping everyone along. He's doing what he's supposed to do and he's so sweet about it and his freaking SpaghettiOs and then he dies and I'm like that's not fair. But anyway, he's my favorite character very much my favorite character but I want to talk a little bit about the ending of this book and then I'm going to jump into the Raven King and then just kind of do a quick overview of like all the books and my thoughts for the whole series but the ending of this book was not okay first of all everything in these stories are, is confusing so I have to usually read it over a couple times before I'm kind of okay with what's going on and I kind of understand what's happening but the ending of this I was like okay what the heck is actually happening so I get there in this cave and I get there looking for the mom, but then Ronan, the, like Gansey, like is able to command the bones to wake up and there are all these animals and they go charging through this wall and um, Blue and Ronan get trapped on the other side of this wall with the freaking deer because they jumped on top of the deer that were running, the bone deer, and Adam and Gansey get stuck behind. Now for the record, I do really, really like Ronan and Blue's relationship. I think that's very well done platonic relationship. Very fun. Um, I loved reading about it. So I didn't mind that they were trapped under the other side of the wall because we got to see more of their dynamic. But it was just weird. And so they're on the south side of the wall and then they can't go into this freaking pool because if they go into the pool, then they die. I'm trying to... I'm, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, they die or whatever in the pool and then Blue sees her mom floating in it, but it's a, an illusion. So the pool's really trying to kill them. And it's just like what the heck but then she gets to the other side of the pool where her mom is her mom and her dad first of all her dad is like weird as a heck like I'm just well he's awful like, I can't stand her father Artemis 
He's such a wimp and I don't understand what Mara saw in him, especially since she goes from Artemis to Mr. Grey, who's astronomically a better character than Artemis, but he's still not even like a fantastic character, if you know what I mean, but he's a good character. Anywho, going back. So she finds her mom and Artemis and then Piper shows up and then Mr. Gray is there and then it's this gunfight and then it's this thing and blah, 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 blah. And it's just so much happens in like the last 20 pages of the book that I'm like, oh my gosh. And it felt like they just kind of forgot the mom was missing for the majority of the book, even though they're all like, oh my gosh, every time they bring her up. But it's still like such a small portion of the book for being the main plot that when they finally find her, I'm like, okay, I knew they were going to find her. I knew she was going to be okay. I feel like there's no stakes in this. It doesn't really freaking matter. No one actually gets hurt. Well, I mean, people die, but like no one that we care about. It's just like these random henchmen, like who cares about them anyway? Green Mantle runs away because he's a coward. Piper's there and then the whole cave blows up, whatever. And she's stuck down there and they think she's dead or something. And she's not dead and Neve, the aunt or whatever from book one, who we haven't seen since book one, randomly shows up and is like, hey, I'll help you wake up the demon. And the demon is like literally a wasp. So I don't under, like, I don't understand why it's a threatening thing. They wake it up and that's how the book ends. Again, the stakes were not high enough for me to care about these characters. The, the, um, the dangers were not dangerous enough for me to care about these characters. The one thing I did like was a little bit more um, insight into Gansey and um, how he had like those panic attacks and how he, um, how the PTSD from being stung by all those wasps and bees or whatever as a child, how that came back. Because quite frankly, I love reading about trauma in, in characters and I love it being accurately represented because that's something that everyone deals with trauma in some way shape or form in their life and I don't think you'll ever find a person who doesn't have some kind of trauma um and for it to be accurately represented in books I think that's so important um so I was glad that they actually touched upon that in this book that Gansey actually struggles with anxiety and with PTSD from having such a near-death experience um that was actually really really good in this book really can appreciate it but anyway the ending was it was confusing it was sporadic it was just punchy in the face kind of shock and i didn't really enjoy the ending of it um but yeah that's blue lily lily blue and i'm gonna hop right into the raven king because there's a lot to be said about all these books and I don't want to make this review a million hours long. So let's jump into The Raven King. So The Raven King honestly is my favorite book out of all four of them just because I felt like A, I understood the most of what was happening and B, it felt like the plot line actually kind of hit its momentum, which is pretty sad because this is the last book. So if it's hitting its momentum in book four, you know the pacing was done a little awkwardly. Um, and that's something that I have to say about all four books is the pacing in all of them felt very, very weird um, and choppy. Like that's the only way I can describe it is that it's choppy. Um, it's like a bunch of exciting things happen and then nothing happens for chapters and chapters. And then a bunch of exciting things happen and then maybe one thing happens that's kind of important in all those exciting things because all those exciting things really mean nothing for the rest of the story. And then you have bland, dry desert, and then bam, you hit an oasis and you're cool again, and then it's bland, dry desert for the rest of the story. And then of course the endings for each and every book is like massive and crazy and insane, and you have 20 pages for it. And that's no different for this one. The pacing is still weird, the ending is still very forced and rushed, and there's not nearly enough time dedicated to the important stuff. Um, primarily the kiss between Gansey and Blue. Um, that was such a build up for the entire series. Like they can't kiss, they can't kiss. Oh my gosh, they can't kiss. And then when they finally do kiss, it's like literally less than a page is dedicated. And I get it, it's a, it's a kiss. How long can a kiss be? But like less than a page is dedicated to the buildup of the kiss, is dedicated to the description of the actual kiss, and is dedicated to the aftermath of the kiss. So like his death. It's like, 
he walks in, realizes he needs to die, says, Blue, kiss me, then he keels over. And I'm like, the, what is that? Like, it's so anticlimactic. And I get it, I can deal with anticlimactic stuff. But for a book that's been, first of all, it's a series. So you expect the end of a series to be epic. And this was just, eh. It just, it happened. And then you're like, okay, cool. I did not feel any satisfaction with reading the last page of this. And that made me feel so bummed out. There was no satisfaction for any of it. I feel like zero questions were answered. I still have no idea what the heck Caves Water is. And quite frankly, like, I don't care at this point. Like, I understand that, um, that like Ronan dreamed of Cape's Water. And I think that was in Blue Lily, Lily Blue, but I can't quite remember if that was in this one or this one, because everything blurs together after a while. But I'm pretty sure it's in this one that he reveals to Adam that he dreamt up Cape's Water. Now, to me, that is weird. And I understand like the concept that she's trying to go with. Like, well, I think I understand that, but I'm not 100% sure. And that is Ronan, it, Cape's Water has always been in existence on the ley line or whatever, but Ronan has just given it a shape and he dreamt up the forest aspect of it and what it looks like, what it sounds like, what it feels like, all that stuff. And he's put the personality to Cape's Water and like, okay, that's fine. It's kind of a cool idea, but it's so not fleshed out. And even Opal isn't fleshed out at, at all to the point where like you don't even freaking know her name until like the last couple pages of this for the freaking epilogue and i'm like they just call her the orphan girl the whole time and i'm like that's so disrespectful like can someone just name this poor child but that being said i actually really enjoyed her character too once i got here this one i loved jesse this one i loved opal and there was so little dedicated also for characters who are so underrated, Noah, where is he? Like, he has like a very brief scene where he tries to claw out um, Blue's eye and then that's it. They like never talk about him again until like the very end where it's like, oh, so he, time's a circle and he was the one who was talking to Gansey this whole time not actually um, Glendower. And I'm like, oh, okay. So Glendower is such an itty bitty piece of the entire Raven Cycle series. And that really came to a head in this book, which is literally entitled The Raven King. And Glendower is found out to be just a pile of bones. And I'm like, what the heck kind of conclusion is that? Also, why did Gansey actually need to die? Like, like what? I actually still don't understand and maybe I should read like forums or something asking other fans like why he had to die. But maybe you guys can, you guys can answer me in the comments too. Why did Gansey need to die? Because my understanding of it was this. Ronan was, because Cave's Water was being attacked by this wasp like demon, which honestly, why don't you just squish the darn thing? Like, why is it such a big deal? Anyway, so Cape's Water's being destroyed and eaten, whatever, rotted away by this demon, right? Fine, I get it. Since Ronan is connected to Cape's Water, like Cape's Water gives Ronan life and Ronan gives Cape's Water life. Cape's Water gives Ronan life and Ronan gives Cape's Water life. Like they can't live without each other kind of a thing. That's my understanding of it, but tell me if I'm wrong. Anyway, so Cape's Water's being destroyed. Ronan is therefore like being destroyed as well. Um, and it's either that or the demon is just killing Ronan because Ronan is a dreamer and dreamers are dangerous to the demon because all dreamers do is make things and the demon just wants to destroy things. So basically he's trying to cancel out his one major competition. Um, anyway, so the demon is killing Ronan and my understanding of why Gansey needed to die. And again, I could totally be wrong with this is that, um, he needed to sacrifice himself to the demon in order to like satisfy the demon like give the demon someone else in order to save somebody but to me how does that destroy the demon won't the demon just take your life form and then take ronin's right after you're dead um so to i don't quite understand that whatsoever i also don't understand how he came back to life i knew he was going to so when he died i didn't care um i didn't cry i didn't cry for anyone's death in this let me make that one thing 
perfectly clear for Persephone, for um, Gansey. Jesse made me sad, but I didn't even cry for that one. No one, literally no one for Piper, for Green Mantle. I didn't care about any of them enough to the point where I was like, I'm going to cry. And I have definitely cried for books. I'm not a huge crier, but I've definitely cried for some really phenomenal death scenes. What was this death scene? He literally kisses Blue and keels over. And I'm like, what the heck just happened? And then the very next page, it's like he's coming back to life. So I don't care that he's dead. You know, it's, it's a young adult book, so I knew he was going to somehow come back. But part of me was hoping that he didn't because I like dark endings. And part of me was really hoping he would just die and stay dead. But I also knew that wasn't going to happen. So when he died, I didn't care. When he came back to life, I didn't care because I knew it was going to happen. None of it was shocking. None of it was like, oh my gosh. Quite frankly, the only twist and mystery of this story was... It only existed because I had no idea what was happening. You know what I'm saying? Like... If I knew what was happening, none of it would have shocked me. And honestly, none of it really did shock me. It was more just like, huh, okay, so that just happened and I didn't see it coming. But the only reason why I didn't see it coming is because I have no idea what came before it because I'm still, what the heck just happened. But, like, I mean, I generally get what's going on. Like, I'm not stupid. Although that might be up for debate after this video. I'm not stupid, but like just the magical system I don't understand and this world and the, I think more so the characters reactions to things just confuses me and I'm like, what? Um, like Henry, let's talk about how random Henry is. He just shows up in this book and now I understand he showed up in Blue Lily Lily Blue for a brief period of time. I understand that he was there, but he is such a small part in Blue Lily Lily Blue or even, I don't remember if he shows up in the Dream Thieves or um, the Raven Boys, I don't remember. Um, but if he did, it's such small scenes that you would never think of him as significant. He's only become significant in this book and he's A, just so accepting to this magical world and I mean, I get it because his mom is kind of connected to the magical world, but a, he's way too accepting right off the bat, and B, he's just so chill with like being put in like life-threatening situations and just joining this gang of kids who never cared about him before. And he's just like, here I am, let's hang out. And he he helps Gansey get over his PTSD. I mean, well, partly he like takes him down to this weird crawl space and he's like, want to know something? I was kidnapped as a small child and this is my biggest fear. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? Like, who are you and why are you here? And frankly, I feel like this series needed to have more books in it. And now I'm going to be kind of going into just the series as a, as a whole because I don't really know what else to say about this book other than it's my favorite because it felt the most coherent, but it's also a mess like all the other ones. So I'm going to just talk about the whole series. And basically to start that off with, it needs to be spoken about Henry and that is this series needed more books in order to introduce those characters earlier and to get all this information in there. Like honestly, I feel like we could have had a fifth book where the ending for the whole series could have been so much better. There could have been way more explanation as to what the heck is going on and the magical world and caves water and everything else. And three, each character could have a lot more scenes because there's so many characters. There's all the women that live in the 300 Fox way. There's the five main characters, Noah, Blue, Gansey, Adam, and Ronan. No one needs more scenes, first of all. He's very, very just, they throw him in and then they rip him right back out again. And I'm like, why are you doing this to my boy? Like, that's not fair. Like, he needs to be there. He's a massive part of the story, especially for the first couple books. Um, especially more so for the first book, he was such a huge part. Why did they just forget about him for the other three? Like, I don't understand. But, um... Uh, they would have had way more time to focus on the five main characters. They would have had way more time to focus on all the extra side characters. They would have had way more time to just explain, explain, explain everything in creative ways. So it doesn't feel like just exposition, 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 but it felt like, um, this is a creative storytelling technique that the author is utilizing in order to make sure that the readers know what the heck is going on. Because again, it's not that I'm stupid because I know this because other people have said in their reviews that they also were confused about this story and I get it like it's a very confusing series 
And I think that's because the author had a very clear picture of what she wanted in her head, but she did something that I always got yelled at for doing. So I'm not like completely saying that she's, you know, a terrible author. Like I'm not saying that at all, actually. She's actually a very good author. But um, in school and stuff like that, when I would write things, specifically papers and academic stuff, um, my professors and my teachers and whatnot would always say, you write like you're talking to people who know what's going on. And that was something that I had to learn. When you write something, you need to pretend the audience knows nothing about anything. Um, and uh, Maggie, she wrote these books thinking that her audience already knew the world and the magic system and the way things are run and the way that people in Henrietta think and behave. And quite frankly, I grew up in Vermont. I grew up as far north as you can get without being in Canada. I don't know much about Henrietta or down south or anything like that. I don't know how the people are down there. I haven't really traveled down south ever. So for me coming in as a completely like random human being reading about this town that's down south, yes I can understand like southern hospitality and stereotypes like that, but she's writing about this town and everyone's acting so weird and I'm like is this the way people act down south or is this just the way people act in her story and that was never made clear and it's not the biggest deal in the world but it's just like people act so randomly and literally no one cares like mr gray is walking around telling people hey i'm a hitman and people are just like that's cool and i'm like is this just a thing that people do down there or what um i'm going to make the assumption that that doesn't really happen but you never know um i also like i do read a lot of fantasy but each fantasy book is so or it's typically so unique. Um, the magic system in Harry Potter is wildly different from the magic system in Lord of the Rings or even The Hobbit. Um, and I've read Throne of Glass and that's a fantasy series and their magic system and their, you know, mythical creatures are so vastly different from the Raven Cycle series. So if you are writing a story that has a magical system or a fantasy aspect to it or whatever, you need to explain how that works otherwise you don't like the, the audience they don't understand the stakes because if you say oh my gosh this person has a flaming sword we can only understand it based off of our um our knowledge of it so we might be afraid of a flaming sword but if the author is trying to say oh everyone in this world has um protected skin so flaming swords can't harm them but we don't know that we're still going to be afraid of the flaming sword even though the author doesn't want us to be, you know what I mean? Or like something reversed like that. I don't know if I'm making sense, whatever. But you need to explain the rules of the world in order for us to appreciate when stakes are high or when stakes are low or what the dangers are or what the safety aspects are. And learn how to describe things properly because I know a lot of people were very confused about the layout of Henrietta and how it all works and there's like random fields filled with cars that this guy dreamt up in the second book and no one's questioning that and then there's these random caves here and there and everywhere and then which cave was the one that they went into during Blue Lily Lily Blue that Jesse didn't want them to go into and what was the cave that they went into when, the mom, when they found the mom and I was like oh my gosh I don't freaking know and where's cave water because I found that pretty darn easily in the first book and then it was like this thing that he'd been searching for forever and Gansey's journal was only important in the first book and then they just forgot that it existed in the rest of it and they brought up all these random things that never ever came back and Declan was just kind of there and I don't even know like there's just so many random things that happen and were squished into one story and was was tried like the author tried to force feed the audience the idea that everything's connected by not connecting anything you know like there's these magical people who um can dream up items and then there are these people who buy those dreamt items but then there are these kids who are looking for this king and then there are these group of women who are psychics who are looking for this other psychic who disappeared and they don't talk about her at all until the last book and then she just dies. Um, so she really has no importance at all even though in book one they were like wow she's so important and what is she doing secretly in the attic and oh my gosh what is Neve up to and blah blah blah. So nothing is ever coherent or put together or made to feel like it's connected. I feel like you could have had a whole story dedicated just to Ronan which Maggie is doing currently with Call Down the Hawk. He gets his own series 
but um, for the Raven cycle, I feel like you could have had a whole story just about Ronan. You could have had a whole story just about like Piper and Green Mantle. You could have had a whole story just about Gansey and Blue and those crew just looking for the king made that the story instead of all these other random plots you could have had plenty of you do have plenty of material for any one of those stories to fill up a whole series you know what i'm saying you could have an entire series of just looking for glendower and all the stuff that they encounter and you don't need to have all the extra BS that you have in this story because it's so confusing and makes everything so choppy and you have so little time to dedicate to the characters and the people in the storylines that the audience really wants to see. Does anyone actually care about those dream um, bandits? I don't dream the dream thieves kids. Um, not the kids, but the people who are who are buying all the items. Does anyone really care about those rings of like the mafia basically? Like no one cares about that. Um, no one care. I mean Piper's cool. I like Piper a lot. But she could have had her own story quite frankly. And they really did her dirty in the last book. Like she's so dumb in the last story. I, I don't understand it where she's giving away the demon and or she's selling it. And I'm like, why would you sell a demon who's literally bound to you and you can get literally anything from? Why would you be selling it for money? Why not just ask the demon to make you a stack of money? It already made you a house and everything else. And I also love how she's selling it to these people. And the way she sells it to them is saying like, oh, look at this nice dress and these shoes that it made me. You're selling it to people who literally want to buy weapons and other things like that they're not going to be oh my gosh are you for real it made you a dress sign me up let me put a couple million on that demon and again it looks like a giant wasp so why not just squish the darn thing anywho i'm getting way off topic i don't know what i'm saying anymore this series is just wild it blew my mind in a not a good way uh more so just like what is going on kind of way because I spent way too much time thinking about what is going on in this story and I've watched so many reviews and I've tried to piece it all together and I've tried to be like okay this is what's going on and like during the story like while I was reading it like I knew what was happening but I had no idea what was happening and like surface level I knew what was happening I knew that the characters were getting in their car and were driving to x y and z and we're gonna do blah 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 but I didn't know beneath that I didn't know why they were doing that there are legit motivations behind stuff and things just seem to happen and I didn't like that at all it felt very just blah, and disjointed and weird anyway guys thank you so much for watching I'm sorry if this review was just all over the place and random um but honestly I don't know how to organize my own thoughts about this story because the story was not organized either so Again, I hope you enjoyed whatever you could understand from this video. Um, and I will be back very soon with another video. Hopefully that's a little bit more uh, concise and chill and not quite so ranty and blah. But I needed to get all my thoughts out. And um, you guys are my therapy sometimes because I need to get it all out and just vent. And I don't have a lot of friends that I can just vent to about books because they don't read the same things that I do. Um, which sounds very sad. But anyway, I hope you guys have a delightful day and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.